Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install Solus. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot that disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. So I'm on the uh, GetSolus.us website here, and I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below so you guys can get to it as well. What we want to do on the website is go ahead and find a download for Solus. So uh, you, there's two ways of getting there, either in the navigation bar you can hit the download button, or down here, you can also hit the download button. I'm sure this is not guaranteed to be here, but uh, so we'll go ahead and select the one on the top in the nav bar. Solus comes with uh, three different types of desktop environments. You can download the, the budgie version, gnome version, or the mate version. This all depends on what kind of environment uh, you like and what you're used to. So you can select from the three what I actually want to do is install the budgie version because this is a custom desktop environment specific to Solus. So I plan on downloading this one. And in order to do that, all I have to do is select the closest mirror. The only available architecture for Solus is uh, the 64-bit architecture. So I'm not really worried about navigating through all the mirrors and finding the correct one for myself. Instead, I'll just go ahead and hit the closest button and allow to go ahead and start downloading the Solus 4.0 Budgie ISO. And after your download's finished, we'll go ahead and flash the ISO to a USB CD or DVD of your choice. So now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD. Belena Etcher is an easy to use application available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk. Also, if you're new and stopping by to watch the install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. We'll want to go ahead and select the image that we just downloaded, so go ahead and hit select image and select your budgie ISO image. So I got the Solus 4.0 budgie ISO. Go ahead and hit open. Next, we're gonna select a target where we want to flash the image onto. And I have a USB here, which I'm gonna go ahead and put in now. And finally, all I have to do is go ahead and hit the flash button. Uh, if you want and you got more than one USB, CD, or DVD, you can go ahead and select it from uh, the list in here. They'll be populated in. Make sure to select the correct one because it will erase all the content, contents on that disk. And go ahead and hit that flash button. It may ask you for a administrative password. Go ahead and put your password in and let it continue on flashing. After you flash the disk, you'll take it over to a computer or server where you want to install Solus on and then insert it. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select the newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer, usually one of the F keys, like F2 or F10. Then finding a tab, usually called boot order, and exchanging the order so you can boot the bootable disk first. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS, and you should see a similar screen to this if you did everything correctly. Go ahead and take a moment to like the video if you're in this far, it really does help me out. So if you've done everything successfully, you'll be in the live image of the Solus distribution here, where we will begin the installer and start installing Solus, so we permanently have it. What we'll do is, uh, there's actually nothing on the background when you first start up, instead here on the far left corner you have a launch install operating system. You can also search for it using their search bar up here if you want. Uh, just type in install, I'm sure you'll find it. Go ahead and launch the application. Give it a moment here. And here we go. We're ready to install Solus and the first thing you're greeted with is uh, what language you want to run the installer with. So I am going to select English because that works for me. You can select whatever you want. They have many different languages here and then go ahead and hit the next button. So the next couple questions are related to our location and instead of finding your location automatically, which you can select this and it'll find your location and fill in like time zones uh, and stuff like that. I don't want it to know my location so I'm going to go ahead and hit next here 
and then we'll fill that information in by ourselves. Then we're asked which keyboard layout we'd like to use. English US is fine for me. You can also test your keyboard down here, make sure that everything's working properly. And as you can see, mine is QWERTY works. So next here, we select our time zone. And you can also search for your time zone here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, I am going to be in Denver, Colorado today. So I'll choose that time zone, mountain time, and hit next. Then you're followed by where you want to install the Solus image onto. I only have one hard drive in this uh, computer, so um, the first selection for me is fine, and I don't have anything else in my drop down. Make sure you select your correct hard disk or SSD that you want to install Solus on, because whatever's on there will be wiped off. So I suggest using a clean copy of a solid state drive or a hard disk. We'll go ahead and allow it to automatically partition the empty space on the disk and install a new copy of Solus. And then we'll hit next. You can also select whether or not you want to use the LVM for the new installation, which is called the logical volume management. It allows you to simply resize your partitions later if you need to do so. It's a little harder to do whenever you don't select this option, but for me, that's okay. I don't plan on expanding the space and uh, you can also encrypt the new installation if you want. Go ahead and hit next. And then the first thing it's gonna ask you is a host name for the computer. So this is what's gonna show up on the network with anything that can see it. So mine's going to be called Savvy Nick. Next, uh, you'll want to select the option of whether or not to install a bootloader. If you don't install a bootloader, it will not boot into this new Solus install unless you already have another bootloader pre-installed on the hard disk that you're using. Uh, we don't, so I'm going to install the bootloader and then I'm gonna hit next. Now it's asking us for a new user and I'm going to create a user called Savvy Nick and my real name is Savvy Nick. We'll put a password in and confirm that password and this box looks like it cannot be unchecked and it gives the administrative capabilities to the user. I'm not sure how to uncheck this, but uh, we'll go ahead and move on because I do want to give this uh, user administrative capabilities. I bet you it's if you add more than one user, you have to give one user, it seems, uh, administrative privileges. So possibly if we add another one, see, now you have the option of whether or not you want to give the next user administrative privileges or not. Um, I'm not gonna make another user. You can make as many as you see fit. And then hit next. And now it's going to review all the options before install installing the base system. And uh, you have your language and region, all the stuff that we put in, installation, what it plans on doing. So it's gonna give a gig to uh, the swap partition and create the rest on the root for the root partition. And it's gonna use the msdos uh, partition table and the user, an administrative user, is going to be created called Savvy Nick. And then the host name is Savvy Nick, and we're going to install a bootloader. And I'm fine with all that, so I'm going to go ahead and hit install. At this point, it's going to warn you that everything on the disk that you have set to install on will get erased. So all the data on that disk is going to be erased. If you're sure, go ahead, hit OK. And now, the base system will begin installing and all necessary packages will be installed at this point as well. So the Solus distribution deploys a custom desktop environment budgie, which focuses on a simple environment for home computing and is designed with a minimal learning curve in mind. Also their default desktop environment comes with most of the everyday software that, that people would need, including a browser, office suite, and multimedia applications. They also do focus on devs, content creators, and gamers, and give support to these communities, as well as making a nice encompassing distribution. Let's go ahead and let this installer finish. And at 
this point the installer is complete and what you'll have to do is go ahead and restart now. It's also warning you to make sure and remove any installation media in order to boot into the proper operating system, the new one that you installed and not into any live media. So go ahead and hit restart now. And if you've done everything successfully and the install went properly after boot up, you'll be in your new Solus Linux desktop environment. Budgie, congratulations. And we're going to look around real quick just to kind of show you around what you can do. Right here is the software center, so you can go ahead and download other packages, as well as launch a file browser to look for files. Launch a browser for the web and then you have a couple more options for music and videos. And then if you hit this dotted matrix here, you'll go ahead and see the rest of the subcategories that you have, as well as you can search for other applications in the top there. And on the far right side, this little taskbar, you can hit this little button, which allows you to see your notifications and various applets like a calendar or to play music and turn up and down your volume. You can go ahead and hide it by hitting the same button again. And you have your time. You can shut down the system, restart or log out using this option, as well as control the volume, see the current battery remaining, turn on and off notifications, and look through your network. I hope you enjoyed this installation tutorial of Solus Linux. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.